Welcome to St. Andrews Institute of Technology and Management. This college is affiliated to Maharshi Dayanand University, Rohtak, and approved by All India Council for Technical Education. This video lecture is a part of series developed for online classes. Hello everyone, my name is Ashish Tripathi and I am working as an assistant professor at St. Andrews Institute of Technology and Management since 2015. My areas of interest are data analysis and data visualization which are recommended to be a data scientist. Let's begin our journey for the course Object Oriented Programming using C++. In today's session, we will study about the classes, function and static members of the class. Of unit, this course is of unit 2. Class a class is used to specify the form of an object and it combines data representation and methods for manipulating that data into one neat package. The data and functions within a class are called the members of the class. A class definition starts with the keyword class followed by the class name. A class definition must be followed either by a semicolon. It is a template for object. It binds data members and functions into a single entity. It is a blueprint for objects. It represents real world entity. All members are private by default. It is a way of representing the encapsulation. So you can think of a class as a logical entity. Likewise, if I say that you think of a company then you just need to have the structure of the company which is having some of the data members like the employees department, the sales department, human rights department etc. and the functions of those departments. These are collectively bind together inside a common name that is the company. Here is a syntax for the class. It is having the class as the keyword followed by the class name then we have the block having the private protected and the public section each section has its own variable and function declaration you can note that when the end of this block is happening there is a semicolon don't forget to put the semicolon here is an example of the class box it has the private members as the length, breadth and height. These are all double data type. Then in the public section we have two functions namely set dimension for setting the values of these length, breadth and height and get volume function for getting the volume correspondingly for the box. The class member functions can be defined either inside or outside the class definition. A scope resolution operator is used to bind the members to a class. It resolves the ambiguity when several classes have the same name functions. Here is an outside definition of a class function. The fully qualified name should be used as there should be a return type then the class name then scope resolution operator followed by the function name and there is a parameter list inside it there is a function body when a function is defined inside a class then no scope label is used because you are just defining the function inside the body of the class it is automatically made in line and is compiled along with the program and no call is made during the runtime Class members are referenced by making the class variables as the object. So with the help of object you are able to execute the functions of the class. 
when you are making a function inline then that inline function can be accessed directly by the main function the function inline should not have the return should not be a recursive should not have the if and the switch statement here you can see a complete example for the class where a class box is defined again with having the private members as the length breadth and height in the public section we have this dimension method which is setting the values for these length breadth and height pass as the parameters for l b and h then in the volume section we have the formula for length cross breadth cross height which is being returned by this function the get volume function is defined outside the body of the box hence it has the fully qualified outline definition in the main section we are making a reference of this box likewise box b1 b1 is the reference it refers to the box as an object then we are just executing the set dimension function by saying b1 dot set dimension and passing the values 10 to 20 and 10 to length breadth and height respectively then in the next see out statement we are executing for the volume section and we are asking for b1 dot get volume to get the volume of this box types of functions there are three types of functions in c plus plus the first is accessor function accessor functions allow us to access the data members of the object it does not change the value of the data members these are called getters example get dimension get volume second is the mutator function these functions allow us to change the data member of the object they can perform calculations on them and show the result these are called setters example calc grade or set volume set dimension third is the manager function these functions perform a specific tasks to initialize or destroy the class instances example constructors and destructors scope rules for the class there are basically four rules for a class that is the global class a class is said to be global class if its definition occurs outside the body of all the functions in a program so in the previous session we have defined a class box that was outside the function definition hence that was the global class local class a class is said to be local if its definition is inside the function body so if we are making a function and that function contains the definition of a class then that class becomes the local class global object an object is said to be a global object if it is declared outside all the function bodies and is globally available to all the functions a global object can only be created of a global class so if we are making a class box as the global class and just after the definition of a class before the semicolon we are making a reference of that class then that reference becomes the global object of the class and that global object can be accessed by all the functions in the program local object an object is said to be local object if it is declared within a function and it is cannot be used outside of that function a local object can be created both for the local as well as the global class so in the previous example inside the main function we have declared the b1 as the object of the box class that b1 reference is known as the local object because it cannot be used outside the definition of the main function here is an example to show the scope rules for the class we have a class x 
that is a global class declared just after the headings then we have a global object ob1 of the x class declared outside the definition of the class then we have a main function and inside the main function we again make a local object of x that is ob2 this ob2 is declared inside the main hence it cannot be used outside of this main function also we are defining a class y inside the main function this class y is a local class because it is accessible only to the main function hence we are making a local object of y inside the main function only that is ob3 this y class cannot be accessed outside the main class by any object and you cannot make a global object of this local class inline functions if a function is inline the compiler places a copy of the code of that function at each point where the function is called at compile time any change to an inline function could require all clients of the function to be recompiled because compiler would need to replace all the code once again otherwise it will continue with the old functionality to inline a function place the keyword inline before the function name and define the function before any calls are made to the function a function definition in a class definition is an inline function definition even without the use of inline specifier so if you are defining a function inside the class body then that function automatically becomes inline function otherwise if you are defining outside the class body you have to mention the inline keyword likewise in the example you are seeing that we are defining a function max having two arguments x and y and this max function is inline by the keyword inline before that it is returning whether x is greater than y or not in the main function we are just calling this function max and when we are calling this function then the above code is compiled and executed to produce the following result that is out of the 20 and 10 pass as the argument it is returning the 20 as the maximum value this inline function is faster to execute as the call is made during the compile time now here is a section for default argument and overloading default argument is the optional value provided to the parameter in case the argument value is not provided in the function call example we are making a function called amount and in this amount we have the three parameters namely principal rate and time out of these three we are providing default values to rate as 0.08 that is the 8 percent and to the time that is one year so if we are making call to the function by passing only the single parameter then that argument becomes the principal if we are passing the two parameter then the first one becomes the principal and the second one becomes the rate if we are passing the three parameters then all the three values are replaced in the argument section but please note that if you are making a default argument function then you should be providing the default values from the extreme right hand side otherwise if you are making the between or the first argument as the default one and the rest are not the default then it will lead to an error but in overloading several definitions of a function is provided with varying the type of a parameter order of parameter and the number of parameter example to execute the same above line we are making several definitions of the amount function with the single parameter two parameters three parameters and different types of parameters also so function overloading is more beneficial than the default argument because default argument may not work for all possible combinations of arguments likewise if we are having the different data type of the rate and time then the default argument is not being called in overloading multiple function definition can be executed with different calls 
where as a default argument only one definition is executed so if we are making a different different definitions of the function then we can manipulate these definition with our choice but in the default argument there is only a single definition of the function which cannot be manipulated according to the choice given by the user compiler has to test default values in the call hence it takes time so if you are using a default argument then it is it is leading to a overhead o to the compiler because it has to cross check for the default argument present in the function and then a call is made to that but in overloading there is a direct combination for the call to the statement and the compiler is not overheaded next is the static class members the members of a class is preceded with the keyword static can be data member or the function member coming to the static data member it is a globally available for all the object of that class type it has the following features there is only a single copy for the entire class this single copy is shared by all the object of the class it is visible within the class itself and its declaration is inside the class definition its definition is outside the class definition its default value is minimum value of the data type so if you are making a data member as a static then you have to declare that data member inside the definition of a class and you have to define that data member outside the definition of a class so that it should be assigned with some initial value if you are not assigning the initial value to that data member then the value is taken to be the minimum of that data type that is for example if you are making a integer static data member then the value 0 is assigned to that data member similarly static data functions has it is a member function used to access only the static data member of a class its features are it has access only to static data member and it is invoked by using the class name instead of the object name so you have to call the function uh, that is static by using the class name not by the object name here is an example to showcase the static functionality here is a class x having a uh, a variable then a count that is a static variable in the public section we are having two functions one function is set a which is setting the value of the a variable in the x class and also increasing the value of the count in the display count function we are displaying the value of the count please note that display count function is a static member function then after the definition of the class x we are initializing the count value to be 0 just specify this line that we are using the data type then the class name followed by scope resolution and then the data member inside the main function we are making two object of the class x that is ob1 and ob2 from ob1 i am calling set a function with the value 5 from ob2 i am calling set a function with the value 10 in all these calls the a value will be assigned to each of the ob1 and ob2 respectively but the count value will be increased from 0 to 1 and 1 to 2 so if you are calling the this count function with the class name then it is outputting with the number of object as the 2 because it is a static data member and it is available to both the object with the same copy constructor a constructor is a member function of a class that is automatically called when an object is created of that class it has the following features it has the same name as that of the class name it is used to initialize the data members of a class it is invoked automatically when the object of the class are created it has no return type it cannot be inherited it cannot be static it is declared in the public section and its address cannot be retrieved 
so if you are making a constructor of a class then in the public section only you can declare the constructor because if you are declaring a constructor in the private section then object cannot access the private data members or the private functions hence there is no use of making a constructor to be a private one also constructors are not inherited so in the case of inheritance the constructors are kept in the original base class okay so what is the use of making the constructor constructor are just used to initialize the data member with some initial values this value can be assigned by the user or you can take some initial values by the programmer itself please note that constructor do not have any return type it cannot be void also because constructors are towards the object and it cannot return any type to the object constructor cannot be static because each and every constructor is linked to the object and object can access or non static data because static data is assigned to the class hence constructor cannot be a static one types of constructor basically there are three types of constructor in c++ default constructor parameterized constructor and copy constructor in the default constructor is the constructor with no parameters there are two types of default constructor also one is the implicit the other is the explicit implicit default constructor is a constructor when a class does not contain an explicit constructor then the compiler will supply a default constructor having no argument it simply allocates memory to the data members of the object so remember you have made a class box and in that box you have made a set dimension method or set a method without using a constructor box so in this case the compiler will have made its own constructor and that constructor was called the implicit default constructor in the explicit default constructor we are declaring a default constructor without any argument to provide some initial values to the object members inside the parameterized constructor there are some parameters in the definition of the constructor it hides the implicit default constructor supplied by the compiler inside the copy constructor this constructor is used when another instance of that class is being copied that is if we don't provide a copy constructor then compiler automatically create it in the public section it is of the form class name parenthesis y class name and ampersand it is called in the following situation when an object is assigned to another object that is ob1 equals ob2 when an object is passed by value to a function that means when the object is passed as the parameter to a function and when the function returns an object then all these three cases the copy constructor are used because inside the copy constructor the values of the data member of that object will be copied to another object data member here is an example to show the different type of constructor we have made a class student having two data members namely roll number of integer type and name of character array type in the public section we have defined four functions namely student 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 and show there are three constructors the first is the explicit default constructor having no parameters the second is the parameterized constructor having two parameters and the third is the copy constructor in the show function we have declared the roll number and name to the user we have defined all these constructor outside the body of the class in the first definition of explicit default constructor we have assigned zero to roll number and null to the name in the parameterized constructor we have assigned the value r to the roll number and n to the name in the copy constructor we are just assigning the values passed by the object to the calling object inside the main i am making the object of this student class firstly i have made a object s so 
when i am making an object as then the explicit default constructor is being called because there is no parameters in the object secondly i am making an object s1 by passing two values 101 and ashish then the parameterized constructor will be called in this case hence I, if i am calling s1 dot show then it is making a call to the show function of the class and displaying roll number as 101 and name as ashish in the next line i am assigning s1 to the s2 object so if i am assigning an object to another object of the same class then the copy constructor is being called here all the values from the s1 object is being copied to the s2 object so if i am calling s2 dot show it is also displaying the same values as the s1 namely roll number as 101 and name as ashish invocation of constructor invocation means the calling of the constructor so invocation of a constructor can be done in two ways that is a implicit call or the explicit call as you know implicit call is a call in this a constructor is called even when its name is not mentioned in the object declaration statement just now we have said that we are making a student s1 by passing to two values 101 and ashish that was the implicit call because we aren't mentioning the object name but in the explicit call the name of the constructor is explicitly mentioned in the object declaration this is done like this we are making a student class having a object ob and we are passing the 102 and abc values to the constructor of this student class through this we can create temporary instance of a class that is no name of object is given and function is called using explicit call to the constructor likewise if i am calling the show function without creating an object of the class i can do it very well with using the explicit call to the constructor i just call the constructor passing the values to it and call the show function after that it won't create any object destructors a destructor is a member function of a class it is used to destroy the values of the object which are not being referenced it has some following features it has the same name as of the class its name precede with the tilde sign the tilde sign can be found before the number one key it is invoked automatically when the object are being destroyed that is they are not being referenced a class can only have one destructor destructor has no arguments it cannot be static its address can't be retrieved it has no return value and it is always declared in the public section so here is a destructor for the class student it has the student name and it has been a tilde sign before that you can not pass any argument to this destructor memory management in c++ there are basically four sections of the memory referenced by the c++ program that is a stack memory heap memory global variable memory and program code memory the program code memory contains the compiled code of the program every instruction and function has a particular address in it global variable area contains all the global declarations inside the program memory is allocated to them at the start of the program and remains till the program execute stack area contains the return address of the functions argument passed to the function and the local variables heap memory area is a region of free memory from which chunks of memory are allocated dynamically that is when we are making new object or allocating or malloc or realloc then this heap memory area will be used by it static memory allocation when the amount of memory to be allocated is known beforehand and the memory is allocated during compilation time itself it is referred to as a static memory allocation example the statement int a equal to 
then the value 5 is assigned to the a variable and this a variable is assigned uh, or allocated a memory in the memory area dynamic memory allocation when the amount of memory to be allocated is not known beforehand and is allocated during the run time itself it is referred to as a dynamic memory allocation c++ has two operators new and delete for the dynamic memory allocation and deallocation new operator this operator allocates the memory dynamically and returns a pointer storing the memory address of the allocated memory the lifetime of this pointer is not restricted to the scope but lives in memory until explicitly deleted using the delete operator the new allocates memory of the size equal to the size of the specified data type and returns the pointer pointing to the newly allocated area that means we have to use the pointer variable name which is assigned by the new keyword and some data type delete the operator delete or deallocates the memory pointed by the given new operator we have to write the word delete and followed by the pointer variable but beware that improper use of the new and delete operator may lead to memory leaks so if you are a professional then only you can use these operators this pointer every object in c++ has access to its own address through an important pointer called this pointer the this pointer is an implicit parameter to all the member functions of a class therefore inside a member function this may be used to refer to the currently invoking object friend functions do not have the this pointer because friends are not the members of a class only member functions have the this pointer Here is an example to show the this pointer use. Here we have made a class box having the parameters for the constructor of the box namely the l, b and h value which is a default constructor. Then there is a function volume which is calculating the volume of this box and there is a compare function which is getting the object of the box type and comparing this object with the this object from the main i have made two object of the box namely box1 and box2 so if i am calling the box1 dot compare box2 then i am passing box2 as the parameter to the compare function and box1 acts as the this pointer here the whichever box volume is greater than then it will be displayed questions for today's session are what are functions and how many types of functions are there what are static class members here you have to mention both the data members as well as the member functions write about the constructor and destructor you can have give a complete example showcasing the constructor and the destructor in one program next question is about the this pointer you have to show the this pointer usage and the last question is the memory management in the c++ here you have to mention the new and the delete keyword you can showcase all these questions with the help of the proper program thanks for watching this video in this video you have learned about the classes member functions constructor destructor this pointer etc you should practice all these with the help of some of the programs till then goodbye and take care